Hey guys, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, today is countdown number 16. Um, <clears throat> I don't know what's going on with my throat, but I hope I'm not getting a sore throat. Because that would really suck. On top of being pregnant. <laughs> um, anyways, I am... Um, the stories were a little bit too long for me to write down. Which I'm probably going to have to do this with the rest of the stories. Because a lot of them are super, super long. And stuff like that. So, I... What I'm doing is basically telling you what the story was. But, like, not actually reading the story. Um... I got shots yesterday, so my arms were kind of sore, so I'm like, eh. Anyways. <laughs> um. Let's see. Excuse me. I just finished eating. We literally got up around 3 o'clock, so I've only been up for about an hour, so I'm still kind of out of it, and... <sighs> Michael's trying to find work. He got laid off because somebody made a mistake and said that he wanted to be taken out of his job. Um, when obviously he didn't say that and never thought that. So. But it's just life. So now he's not getting paid four hundred dollars a week. Well, oh, sometimes over, you know, but basically four hundred. <clears throat> anyways, um, the first story is called "A Different Kind of Grinder" by Look for the Nines. Um, it's basically about a gay guy who's trying to find somebody to have sex with. And, um, which by all means. <laughs> Anyways, so, he decides to look on Craigslist, because he's trying to find something, I guess, kind of kinkier. Well, he finally decides on this one guy. And, uh, he says he's an insurance agent, or something like that. And so, <clears throat> he goes... With a guy to his house. And, um... He starts acting, like, strange. Like... Like, when they kiss, he didn't really kiss them back. And when, you know, like, somebody who wanted to have sex would. And he kept going down into his basement. And searching around and <clears throat> I'm sorry I keep getting distracted by my husband because I'm curious because um, he's trying to sign up for a study a medical study because I get paid a whole, a whole lot of money so basically he's getting paid to be a guinea pig uh, for some new drug or something. I don't know. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but I kind of think that's dangerous. But, I mean, I know it's needed, but it's also kind of dangerous. Because if you react wrong to whatever they're giving you, then... And my dog. And here he is. My good boy. He's good. Yeah. He just likes to... No, no, no. <laughs> he just likes to steal spots. <laughs> yes. That is you. You the puppy. You steal spots. Like, you guys... <laughs> we literally have to drag him out of bed sometimes just to, like, get in our spot. Like, no. <laughs> but anyways, so... The guy gets, like, super nervous about everything, and 
So he finally, like, texts his friend, like, the address of where he was. And the guy, is, like, calls him and is like, hey, you have to get out of there. Um, do you, you're, you're dealing with a murderer or something like that. And so he leaves, basically. Um, and he compares it to... Yes, I can. Um, Gacy. Um, the guy that killed all those children, or whatever, and how one, like, person s survived, and later they found out that they could have been killed, or something like that, and I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's basically about a gay that almost got killed by another gay person, I don't know. And his second story is a little bit scarier. It's... It's called A Real Fixer Upper by Pickle Juice and My Paper Cut. And basically it's about um, this family who is trying to find a house. Um, and they wanted to find... Hello. You're interrupting my video again. Yes, because I just got another thing. Yeah, I heard you talking. I'm sorry I tried to talk a little bit quieter. Because you kept walking back and... You pace when you're on the phone. It's... I have to. The dog is licking my head. <laughs> Hello, pup. Yes. Yes, you're loved. Yeah, I pace when I'm on the phone, too. But, um... I gotta be at the... I can't eat four hours prior to my screen screening, and my screening is next Wednesday. Okay. That's good. I get nine hundred and four dollars for them to give me a fever. <laughs> well, I feel like I'm getting a sore throat. Wink. No, not like that, you dingling. Like an actual sore throat. Wink. <clears throat> Stop it, you. But anyways, uh, back to the story. Wink. So, so they basically, um. They want to get a house that needs to be fixed up, and then they're going to fix up this old house and make it look nice and new. And so they um, <clears throat> decide to start in um, the woman's hometown in Indiana, because it had a lot of small houses, abandoned houses and stuff. And so they find this house that's, like, in the middle of woods, and they're like, this is perfect, because... They didn't want anyone, like, close to... They wanted civilization, but they didn't want to be so close to their neighbors that they could, like, throw a rock and... Yeah. You you get what I mean. <clears throat> um, and so they go, they go inside the house, um, which technically is trespassing. Yes. But they were just like, well, we're going to buy the house, hopefully, and all this other shit. Um... They kept telling themselves they weren't breaking the law, but anyways. Definition of breaking the law. <laughs> and so they go inside the house and they find a, the first house, or the first room they come to um, is a canning room, like where fr fruits and vegetables get canned or whatever. Why do you have that in your house? It's kind of odd. <laughs> and then, um, well basically it was a pantry filled with that kind of stuff, but anyways, um, I say pantry. I did say pantry. You're a pantry. <laughs> anyways, so I um, so they uh, Roscoe, they went into the <laughs> they went into the rest of the house and oh, he stepped on my head and <laughs> it had some fire damage done to it. So then they got a little bit more worried about the house. Damage. And they found all these creepy, weird magazines all over the floor about, um... Little kids. About dolls, and how to make dolls, and creepy stuff about dolls, and just... I hate dolls. I'm just gonna be honest. She never got one as a kid, so she's upset. No, I had Barbie dolls as a kid, but... Huh. And I had some porcelain dolls. But just, like, no. They creep me out now, just because of Annabelle and, like, other movies, and... Ugh. No, it's, I swear it's solely just because Annabelle. Cause, like, what other movie features dolls that's actually scary? Um, 
Not even well, An- not even Annabelle one. Annabelle one was laughable. Yeah, like, kind Annabelle of. two. Annabelle two kicked butt and it was awesome and very it scary. It was better. I enjoyed it. Better. Yeah, I I liked it a lot. We went and saw it in theaters. Don't you just feel like a dandy flower? Well, then they started looking around and going through their personal, the people that live there, their like personal effects and stuff, and they. They found, like, these demon drawings or something, and then they found pictures of girls that were uh, tied up and being tortured and stuff like that. Maybe it's just weird porn. And it probably was, but, you know, whatever. You know, if you're looking at trailer park, you're probably going to find a little bit of meth, and you shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> well, then they start searching through the rest of the downstairs, through the different rooms, and they get to the bedroom. Oh, what are you and... chewing up monster. <clears throat> I don't know. Probably something from under the bed. Uh, you know, something probably useful. <laughs> Are we gonna stop him? No. <laughs> Do we care anymore? No. We tried it before. It doesn't work. Well, then they come to the last room and the downstairs, and it's a little bit cooler than the rest of the house. And they think that's kind of odd. Um, but they find the reason why. There's a hole in the floor and they figured it either just rotted away or rain or something. Um, well, then they actually, like, look in the hole and they see that it's purposely been put there. And it goes kind of down into the ground. And well, they found... The hole does. I mean. And then they found a bunch of women's effects all around the hole. And so then they realized that there was a bunch of dead bodies. And so then they get the hell out of there. <laughs> Why? Um, because there's a bunch of dead bodies of girls. But why? In in the hole, and so they run away, and they never told the cops that they trespassed and went in there. And oh yeah, let's not shit. tell. Let's tell the cops that we trespassed. There just happens to be all these dead bodies here. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Yeah, no, they they didn't do that. I mean, if I was in their position, I probably would. I'd be like, yeah, we broke the law, but still. That's not good. You're in trouble. I mean, I'd rather get in trouble for trespassing than in trouble for, you know, not telling. Well, now you're in trouble for fuck trouble for both. Anyways, um, the last story is called The Cat's Paw, and this story is, like, so sweet. I love it. It almost made me cry. And it was written by Down Danny. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so... Down Danny, that was down. <laughs> um... It was about this lady who had two cats. Tell One was a girl. Hamsters are down to Danny. <laughs> That's really sad. <laughs> Stop! I, we had a hamster that my brother gave me, and she died like five days after we got her. Down to Danny. <laughs> and we buried her out in the yard. But still. Well, you don't flush them down the toilet. Oh, stop. You. Anyways, so this lady has two cats. Um, one is a female, one is a male. And the male is more like her baby. Like, follows around, acts kind of like a dog. Um, like, a really personal lap animal. <laughs> and, um, so one night her husband isn't home and she stayed late at work. And so she, uh... She uh, walks home from work because it's not that far, and she passed by a cemetery, and she got this really creepy feeling, which I don't like cemeteries in general. They give me the creeps, but uh, she she apparently didn't get scared that easy and, and didn't care about cemeteries, but this night just happened, you know. She felt like she was being watched or followed, so she got home, and she, like, locked the door. And usually she likes to take her cat out, um, just for, like, a little walk around their, um, backyard. And tonight her cat was acting really strange and didn't want to go outside, so she locked the door. Well, then, um, she watched some TV, and then she got ready to go to bed, so she went upstairs. And both of her cats were acting strange. And the male one, um... Uh, looked up at the attic um, door because they're upstairs at this point and the attic was like right above them and she could hear noises coming from the attic so she like grabbed 
And and then her cat said the word out, um, like mute it or whatever. And um You out <laughs> Like uh and she be like she said how um her and her husband joked around that sometimes the meow sounded like words but this literally sounded like the word out. So she grabbed out. the female cat and they ran outside and the male cat followed them. But like, dog, what are you chewing on now? Beat him up. That's a piece of a bag. I don't know what bag. Probably. I want gummy worms. That was random. I do too. We did have some. And then someone ate them all without sharing. Hey, hey. Well, you got them for me. I was in the hospital. Popsicle. Anyways, <clears throat> so uh, the male cat started acting like really, really strange. Like it was in a fight with something, but it c you couldn't see it. It was like some kind of invisible entity that it was fighting with. Mm -hmm. And finally it just like stopped. And um, he started acting normal and just like licking his paws like a normal cat, like cleaning himself. And then, like, a month later, she found that his paw was bleeding. And so she took him to the hospital. Popsicle. And, or the vet. And, Popsicle. And the cat uh, had to get stitches in his paw. And it, like, the next year, like, the same day, she found that his paw was bleeding again. And then again. And so they... I think it was like three or four years after the attack or whatever. Um, they found a, um, some cancer in the cat that, and he didn't have very lo much longer to live. And so she wondered if that night had in the bleeding paw had anything to do with the cancer. So, it, it's really sad story, and since I have a cat now, it kind of, it makes it kind of personal to me, but our cat is not, <laughs> our cat is interesting. I mean, she, she'll come to you, but like, I don't know, she's still very young, and still has a lot to learn and everything, but I love her to death, and she's really sweet sometimes, not all the time. Never. Well, he doesn't think she's ever sweet, but she she comes up to me and she'll like she have a rub scratch? her. Like yeah, sometimes when she's tired, that's like a small percentage. Most of the time, no. she's scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. No, no, she doesn't. She doesn't with me at least. That's a lie. Check her she... elbows. Check her elbows. What? My elbows don't have any scratches. There's one. She scratched me once today, but. Um, she, like, when I was eating breakfast, she likes to steal breakfast food, <laughs> or drink the milk, um, so she came over there, and I was, like, drinking it, and then she started licking my fingers, and I was like, oh. Sandpaper kitty licks. She's really sweet sometimes. <laughs> but anyways. Oh, just admitted it. I, I love her to death anyways, so and I love I. Roscoe, and I love Jackson, and I love Jackson the guinea pig. Jackson is the nicest dog. <laughs> Roscoe's just annoying, and very dumb sometimes. <laughs> Why is it puppy? Yeah, and she's a kitten, so they like to play with each other, and, and sometimes it gets annoying. Sometimes, all the time. Yeah, so I get sick and tired of them running around, and I'm like, stop. And, and then we spray them, and they stop. And then Roscoe starts it up again. And then the kitty starts it. I'm like, stop. <laughs> Just stop. <laughs> Anyways, so I hope you guys have a good rest of your week. And, or weekend. Weekend, I should say. And uh, I will see you guys on Monday if I'm not in the hospital. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>